Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of uh, what the heck's the date? Oh, February 19th, 2015. Uh, I'm City Council President Bill Dwight and I'll be presiding. Um, we're going to start before we convene with our um, customary public comment period, in which case um, we ask that you uh, keep your comments to under three minutes. There's a little timer here. And with a new edition of uh, high tech tone that will occur if you if you go over, you don't get tasered or anything if you do go over. But the thing is, is that we we ask that um, if you're wrapping up, please wrap up in the next sentence. Should the timer go off at that point? <coughs> uh, when you when I call your name, please come up, state your name, where you live, and uh, speak your piece. You should understand that the council is constrained by um, our rules of protocol from speaking. And so there can't be an exchange. We, we sit in silence. We get to talk all night. So you have the opportunity to talk to us, speak to uh, truth to power, and the power's got to sit on their hands and bite their tongue. So that said, uh, we'll start with Irvine Sobelman, please. Good evening. My name is Irvine Sobelman. I live at 116 Laurel Park, and I'm here in support of the single use bag ban. Um, similar bans have been passed in a number of communities around the state, around the country. You know, these bags, for one thing, are made of non renewable petrochemicals, so that's certainly one strong count against them. But another thing is that only a small fraction of them actually end up getting truly recycled. The rest of them end up in our landfills or as toxic pollution in our waterways and our soils. I'm grateful to live here in Northampton in a community that really values sustainability and is willing to look at the long-term consequences of our actions. So I think it's time for us to join other forward-thinking communities around the country and enact the ban. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Marty Nathan, please. Thank you, counselors. And in particular, thank you, Councillor Adams and Councillor Spector for introducing the single-use plastic bag ban ordinance. Um, it was something that we probably should have done a while back, but we're doing it now. And uh, I appreciate all your hard work and your thoughtfulness to create an ordinance that will be implementable without a whole lot of burden on the community and will make a lot of difference for all of us. I'm one of those people who always picks up things off of the bike path, off the streets, off of the sidewalks, off of everything. And bags are probably the, um, the second in line after Nips bottles for uh, what I pick up. It's, that is not very scientific. There is science that says that they are the number two um, most common litter on our beaches and in, in the ocean. And Northampton is small, but we need to lead the way in trying to get them out of the ocean where they're killing uh, sea mammals and other, other animals. It takes six pounds of carbon to create one pound of plastic bags, bags that we don't need bags that are end up in litter, bags that are not recycled, and bags that can re be replaced by many other things. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's get it passed and have a cleaner Northampton. Thank you very much. Jasper Lapienski, please. So uh, thanks to those two for telling me what I ought to talk about tonight. Um, Let's talk about where these bags come from, shall we? They are obviously derived from crude oil, i.e. fossil fuels that are not simply burned to put carbon into the air and weaken the jet stream and make it be really cold outside tonight. Uh, they're also used to, to make things and 
the reason that crude oil is toxic and plastic bags are not to us while we're using them is because all of the toxic parts of the crude oil are removed and they're put into cisterns and they're transported somewhere and they're disposed of somehow and between the drilling for them and the transporting the oil by rail and the blowing up in West Virginia and the refining of them and you don't have to get to the disposing of plastic bags to be against them those are my two cents thank you have fun deliberating very kind of you the um, that's all we have signed up for come on up My name is Emily Withenbury, and I own the property at One Amber Lane, which is across the street in the Masonic Street parking lot. And I'm here tonight with my partner, Fitzpatrick Mulvaney. And we just moved to the area in November from San Francisco. So we're very new. Uh, we're very excited to be coming a part of the Northampton community. And we've been working with Wayne Fiden on developing a public facing park in the property adjacent to one Amber Lane that will incorporate a handicap accessible ramp for the business that we're developing, but also have a public facing park as part of the design element. So I was really excited when we brought this to Wayne because it fits really nicely into the city's uh, pavement to parks program. And um, I think something that I just wanted to speak about before it's developed later on in the evening is as somebody new to Northampton, we're kind of coming in, Fitzpatrick and I are coming in with a fresh perspective on where your town is kind of situated in its development and what it has to offer. And I just want to say that we're very excited. I mean, we specifically chose to move to Northampton because we love the downtown. We loved the active and lively and vibrant engaging nature the walkability of it it has it's just poised so nicely for what we want to do but something that it doesn't have is a lot of space for people to take a step out of their daily life and maybe take a step back a moment and i think a lot of what the place what northampton's downtown has to offer are places to step out but step into a place of commerce so step into a business or step into a cafe or a place where you can shop but not really a place to just step out and still be in nature and engage with the community and we think that that's really important and i think that a public facing park is something that would really add to the downtown's kind of engaging nature and also kind of bring a sense of urban beautification to the downtown so having moved here from san francisco we were fortunate in our eight years there to really see how they were able to develop a lot of these parklets really successfully in the city and have business owners or property owners or some sort of stakeholder in the san francisco community take that burden on themselves to develop and maintain these parklets and i think that that's a really interesting thing to delve into in Northampton and see how different stakeholders in Northampton's downtown community can delve into the issue of the pavement to parks and really developing parklets and kind of finding ways for us as stakeholders to work with the city in developing these parks. So I'm really excited in seeing how all of that is going to pan out and how we can engage with our community as we get to know all of you and, and really kind of make this work together. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else interested in speaking at this time? Okay. Thank you all for speaking. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask the, uh, call the roll, please. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Labarge. Present. <coughs> Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Sarah. Here. Councilor Spector. Here. Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, Councilor Murphy and uh, Councilor Carney are absent with excuse. Um, <coughs> well, let's see. We as we move in, well, there's no public hearing scheduled for this uh, for this meeting, so we go right to the communications from the mayor. We we'll understand has some proclamations. Yes. Good evening, uh, Councilors. Um, I have a couple of uh, proclamations, uh, and. Uh, 
the first one is actually one that um, I had intended to deliver last week, but an event uh, got canceled. Um, and so the um, organizers had asked me if I would at least read it in this public venue. Um, it's entitled National Salute to Veterans Patients Week. Uh, it was February 8th through February 14th, 2015. Uh, the event was actually supposed to take place at the VA hospital, um, but be, uh, and it's an event I've gone to in past years. Uh, we're coming in to visit some of the patients, but because of a high incidence of flu, um, they decided to cancel the event. Um, so it's been postponed till hopefully past flu season. So, whereas the week of February 8th is designated as National Salute to Veterans Patients Week and is an opportunity for every citizen to pay tribute to the 98,000 veterans of the U.S. Armed Services who are cared for every day in Department of Veterans Affairs medical centers, outpatient clinics, and nursing homes, and whereas an important purpose of this week is to increase community awareness of the role of the VA Medical Center, and whereas members of our community are encouraged to volunteer in programs that assist veterans and their families because it is fitting for every citizen to salute and pay tribute to these hospitalized veterans, and whereas appropriate rec recognition should be afforded to every veteran, especially those who are wounded, injured, or became ill, now therefore I, Mayor David J. Narkowitz, do hereby proclaim, um, I guess, in retrospectively, February 8th through the 14th, 2015, to be National Salute to Veterans Patients Week in the city of Northampton, and urge citizens to join me in thanking the men and women who served in the armed forces for their service to our country. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the seal of the city of Northampton. So I'll be um, sending this to the VA, and uh, hopefully there'll be a, a, an opportunity to recreate that event later in the year. The other, of, uh, the other um, proclamation that I have the pleasure of reading um, is, uh, is one for an event um, that will be happening this weekend. Uh, but similarly, the organizers had asked me to um, present it to the council so that uh, a wider public could hear about it. Uh, this proclamation is entitled Steve Strymer 65th Birthday, uh, which was on February 17, 2015. Whereas Steve Strymer, a graduate of Amherst College, originally from Ohio, moved to Northampton in 1973, where he worked at the Daily Hampshire Gazette and co-founded the worker cooperative Alder Alderbrand Press, which became Commonwealth Printing in 1982, and whereas Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis appointed Steve Strymer as the worker cooperative representative on the Employee Involvement and Ownership Advisory Board in 1990, and whereas Steve is recognized for his commitment to the worker cooperative movement from his establishment of the Florence branch of Collective Copies in 1997 to his creation of Collective Copies worker-owned cooperative publishing wing Levelers Press in 2009, and whereas Steve's many accomplishments include publishing literary and historical work reflecting the cultural richness of Western Massachusetts, as well as uncovering and revealing Northampton's significant place in abolitionist history, being instrumental in placing Florence on the National Underground Network to Freedom as a national historic site, and establishing the David Ruggles Center for Early Florence History and Underground Railroad Studies, and whereas Steve has led over 2,000 people on African-American on African -American history walking tours in our city, and in 2013, Steve wrote and designed three historic markers now placed at Northampton sites related to abolitionist history. Now, therefore, I, Mayor David J. Narkowitz, do hereby proclaim February 22nd to be a day to celebrate the 65th birthday of Steve Strymer in the city of Northampton. And I urge all citizens to join me in honoring his work to support the cooperative movement and promote the historical importance of the abolitionist movement in Northampton and Florence, whereof I have set my hand and imprinted the seal of the city of Northampton. So, so and, I, and as is referenced on the 22nd, there will be a, uh, uh, a gathering in honor of Steve and his birthday and his many contributions to the community. So, happy birthday, Steve. Happy birthday, Steve, wherever you are. <laughs> um, there are no presentations scheduled for tonight, uh, no licensing petitions up. Um, so, I'll accept the motion to approve the minutes. Oh, oh damn. Yep. <clears throat> damn. <laughs> One minute announcements. I'm sorry. Uh, Council LaBarge. Council Okay. Um, yes. There is going to be a corned beef and cabbage dinner, and it will be held at the Northampton Senior Center Sunday, March 15th. 
Um, the tickets are $10 per person, and the public is invited to attend, and there's no takeouts. I was told to mention that. And this proceeds will benefit the Kick the Tires new van campaign. New van for who? For the senior center. So the senior center. Got it. Okay. I just thought random new vans. Uh, okay. I'll throw out. She stole my announcement. Oh, snap. <laughs> Uh, any other one-minute announcements? Um, I think I've got the I've got the head count for the St. Patrick's Day parade, um, and uh, I understand that there'll be probably snow by then still. So, any event. So um, now I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes from the last. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Corrections? All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Okay, um, there's, <clears throat> do we, we have no reports for committees and appointments and elections. We do have this appointment of uh, Christina Hodges, the Energy and Sustainability Commission. Um, Ms. Hodges of 6 Owaga Avenue, number five. If approved, she'll serve a term from March 2015 to June 2018. We'll move from associate member to full voting member to replace Brian Bruce. I move to refer to ordinance. Second. Second. Any discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Now we will uh, recess to finance. Uh, in the absence of Councilor Murphy, Councilor Adams will be chairing and presiding over finance committee. And I now refer to him. Call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Councilor Adams? Here. Councilor Labarge? Present. Councilor Chera? Here. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting from February 5th? Move to Move approve. To Second it. Second. Any further, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Move to financial orders. Financial order for Amber Lane Parklet. Mr. Chair? I wonder if it might be possible to just move one order out of the agenda. Certainly. The, uh, the, uh, the financial transfers to the treasurer's LA accounts. Certainly. Thanks. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that $27,600 be appropriated from the FY15 general fund undesignated balance fund to the following accounts. Treasurer. <clears throat> OM legal $18,000 treasurer OM financial management services $8,100 treasurer OM tax collection services $1,500 is there a motion to send it forward the positive recommendation I'll make a motion to move it second discussion mr. mayor I was actually gonna um, have you recognize uh, the finance director just to talk a little bit about this if people had specific questions is there a motion to recognize the finance director Yes. Make a motion. second yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I did send you all a memo. <clears throat> uh, we established um, a tax title working group, and it's been meeting for several months. Um, with our new treasurer, we have made um, being very consistent with our tax title collections a priority, and so there's been a lot more activity. Um, we've gotten went from having four payment plans to 15 payment plans, which is good because it gets um, taxpayers in before they get too, too far behind. Um, so as a result of that additional activity, um, we need to add more money. Um, we have a tax title attorney that works with the group, and when a, pro when a property goes into tax title, when it ultimately settles, we get back all of the legal costs that we have incurred. So to date, um, we budgeted 10800 in the legal account for tax titles. We have spent, um, we have spent all of that 108, and we need 18,000 more. Right now, of the 108 that we have spent, we've received back 7800. So ultimately, all of these funds will come back to us. It's just that we need to put them up front. The second item is we need 1500 for the tax collection service account. What happens is when a property gets released from tax title, our treasurer has to file at the registry a document that's $75 to basically take the lien that we've put on the property off. And because we have 
thankfully so many properties coming out of tax title we've gone through that account and now need to supplement that with another 1500 um, we have had 27 properties leave tax title since the beginning of the fiscal year compared to with 13 the same time last year so as you can see there's a lot more activity and then the last um, transfer is for 8100 and this is for financial management services this is the banking fees that we pay and the last year the banking fees were about seven hundred and ninety dollars a month they're actually now twelve hundred and fifty dollars a month um, so the budget didn't really accommodate that so we have to do that also with the um, change in treasurer we went to a new more secure treasurer signature um, it's a more sophisticated and more secure way of having the treasurer's signature imprinted on all the checks. And since we were changing the treasurer's signature anyway, that's when we chose to do the, the newer system. So that was a one-time cost. So those are the reasons for the request. Uh, Susan, can you explain uh, our inventory of tax titles? We're in the landscape of, for instance, is maybe the Commonwealth of titles how, how where, where does that put us I mean do we are we in a bad shape good no. shape no, we're shape? in a very we're in very good shape um, we have a very small amount of outstanding taxes I think in the mayor's budget presentation we had a chart that showed um, do you remember the percentage it was like it's two like two percent so we're really low um, <clears throat> but our our new treasurer and our tax title working group is is what we're trying to do is intervene before taxpayers get even further behind which and to be more consistent about um, how we treat all the taxpayers on the, on the list so that's been our goal and it's actually it's actually working because people are getting into payment plans and getting out of tax title because we're not doing this because we want to own properties we do not want to own properties we want to work with taxpayers so that they can you know come up with solutions that work for them and so. and and i would assume being delinquent is one of those horror stories that builds and builds on itself that the fact that actually the the penalties and fees and and everything else get exponentially worse yeah, right. the, yeah the rate is 16 percent, which is ridiculous but we are by law we have to charge that so so, um, so you're you're trying to head that off for people who are in crisis right i mean and as you said that the, our intent is not to bury them with charges and then eventually seize their property the idea is to allow them the hope is to allow them to survive that and get beyond that and whatever we can do to facilitate that before it gets deeper and harder to extricate themselves right. right and our working group is is you know we're working with city department heads we had one um instance where we got the veterans agent involved um because that was a way to work with with someone who was a veteran we you know use council on aging when we need to so the group is very much focused on trying to find a solution for the taxpayer thank you uh, councilor barge thank you um, Susan, I, if I can recall way back, we really did have problems collecting the taxes. And I can see a significant change within the past four years of what that Treasurer's Office has been doing, working tirelessly, and now seeing a big change now, a significant change. But I can always say, because I have had some residents on my ward, that I had brought to the treasurer's office and previous to the mayor before, who did have difficulties, and the city was excellent working with them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great how the city really does care about residents and trying to help them get those taxes paid. Absolutely. Also, it's important to point out that um, the first six months of the fiscal year, the city has received 291,558 in tax title collections compared to 146,500 last year, which is more than 90%, I think. Right, right. Any further discussion? Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor O'Donnell. Yeah, um, I just echo that to a degree. It's kind of, it's double um, what it was. So are there any other factors, uh, just out of curiosity, besides increased efficiency and the methods you're using to, to collect this? Why? There's been this change or? I think we're just taking a team approach to it rather than just saying this is the treasurer's responsibility okay. just do what you can number one the new treasurer made it a priority number two we have this 
kind of task force that's got, you know, we have the tax title attorney, we have our city solicitor on it, we have our collector, uh, Wayne Fiden comes to our meetings as well. So we're constantly kind of using this as a, as a, as a group that kind of brainstorms how can we, you know, what's the best approach with this property and that property. And the task force is, is a new innovation in the past. Yeah, we've been years. meeting, I would say for about eight months. Okay. And we meet every every other every six weeks or so. Okay, thank you. That's great. Councilor Barge. Yeah, thank you. I think there is a process also. Say that you can live in their homes; they don't have to pay taxes. If they go to sell <clears throat> their property, it's an understanding with the city immediately. Once the house is sold, the city gets those taxes. Is that correct or not? I don't know. Perhaps um, Wayne Fiden knows more about that. I we've, to my knowledge, we haven't done anything. There are some things reverse where you mortgages. can do like reverse mortgages or life tenancies, um, but I'm not sure we've done any of those. At least not since I've been involved with this. We, we could research that with the collector's office yeah, and see what I we know that on that. Brought up Mayor at yeah. one point, and I do know I have a resident on. Um, Briarwood, who apparently has gone through that in the city, that they didn't have, I think they were like 70 and over, so they stopped paying the taxes. They had no children or anything, so if they died, the city would automatically get their taxes. That is old that they have not paid from year to year. I do, I do want to point out that we haven't accelerated or changed the process right now. Nothing gets turned over to the to the city treasurer until it's over a year delinquent and that process has not changed so i d just want to make that clear that people who are one year in arrears are still have not entered tax title they're still with the collector and it's not until the collector goes through the process and that time frame hasn't changed we're still giving people that year and i just want to add because uh, she's too humble to do it i want to thank the finance director for her leadership um, clearly this uh, she leads our financial team and um, we um, made it a priority when we hired the new treasurer that this was an issue that we wanted to really work on and she's put together this team approach and so i want to make sure she gets ample credit for it because i know she won't give herself credit so thank you thank you susan okay, thank you any more questions is there any further discussion all those in favor of sending forward to the full council the positive recommendation? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. <coughs> Financial order for Amber Lane Parklet. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz in planning and sustainability, whereas the open space recreation and multi use tra trail plan recommends a pavement to parks program preserving small previously urbanized or paved areas <coughs> as parklets, and whereas there is a public interest in providing handicap, handicap accessible entrance to buildings to serve all populations and promote commercial vitality and whereas the city has previously provided leases at market value for projects providing access to private space and leases at no cost for projects providing public access and benefits and whereas the city has received a request for the development of a 200 square foot public parklet with a handicap ramp which would serve the parklet and an abutting business in an unused area off Amber Lane that is not needed by central services or DPW and whereas the abutting business has committed to build and maintain the public parklet. Now therefore be it resolved, the city council declares as surplus to city needs said land to allow the development of a parklet. And further, the city council authorizes that the mayor to sign a lease for up to 10 years for such parklet, provided that such lease be recorded in the registry of deeds and comply with MGL chapter 30B, ensure unfettered public access to the parklet, reserve the right of the city to approve the final design and include such other terms and conditions as the mayor finds reasonable. Further, the city council authorizes the mayor to renew the lease two times upon the termination of the original lease if the mayor finds that such renewal is not inconsistent with public access and public needs. Mr. Mayor? I would just ask you to recognize uh, Mr. Fiden, uh, who's been working closely on this project and can speak to it. Is there a motion to recognize Mr. Fiden? Make a motion to recognize Mr. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <coughs> So you've already heard of this project in, in public comment. Um, we were very pleased when the, the property owner came to us and sort of wanted to create a parklet. We often get requests from property owners for access to public property to sort of privatize the space. And we look at those carefully. We have a big public process for that. 
we typically charge for those leases. What's really nice is sort of they're very interested in this becoming a public space. You know, we were clear in the process that if this is a parklet, it doesn't just mean customers for their coffee shop can go there. Somebody can go to the six competition places that are within a block and take it there. They are certainly embracing that. So I'm very pleased with this. Councilor Dwight. The, 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 where does the liability fall on the park? So this is one of the details we have to work out with a lease. Typically, we ask someone to carry insurance for the property, but that's when we work out with both the, the leasee and with Joe Cook in terms of what our premiums cover. So we have to take it. And uh, so the maintenance and all the other stuff falls on the on on the applicants and the petitioners. Right. So, I mean, I, I I love the idea. I think it's brilliant. So, yeah. Councilor Barge. Um, I know I had worked with Wayne on this. I saw it in our packet Friday night, and I was really happy to see what I saw on this, especially providing handicapped accessibility going into the building and coming out of the building. Um, we had a meeting with the Commission on Disabilities Tuesday, and we wish that we had known about this. There was some communication because they would have sent a full support of this project being done on Amber Lane. I talked with the building inspector on Tuesday and he sent me over the plans of what the new owners were going to be doing to that building that they have bought. And on it, he talked to me about <coughs> bathrooms, handicapped bathrooms, um, I think also there will be handicapped counters, which he had told me, the building inspector. Um, I, I just think this is wonderful in the Commission on Disabilities in the city that we have been really looking at businesses, okay, making it handicapped accessible for people in wheelchairs to get into businesses. And some of them really cannot do that. Like on Main Street, they really have a problem. Uh, the Commission on Disabilities, we support this 100%. Thank you. Councilor Spector? Yeah, just a question. Where, on this map, where is Amber Lane? So it, if you go out the front door of City Hall, yeah. there's an alleyway right there. It's called Cracker Barrel Alley. Yeah. At the end of that alleyway, there's a very small brick building. It's it used to be Mary Denisek used to live there. Then, then uh, Attorney Ryan was there. Okay. So it's that small brick building, and there's a tiny grass strip in front of it. Both DPW and Central Services looked at it. They don't need it for snow dumps okay. or for any other purpose. Great, thanks. Councilor Shira? Um, I was actually just going to ask Wayne to clarify where the space was, um, but I'll just say that uh, I've been following what, what you guys are doing with the building, and um, it's great that you want to open up this public space, and, and I agree with what Councilor Barger is saying, that it's really important to have that kind of access because there are many places that people in wheelchairs can't get into. So thanks for doing that. Councilor O'Donnell? Yeah, um, I agree. I, it would be nice if everyone who moved to Northampton brought a small park with them. <laughs> That's probably too much to ask. Um, but I, I'll join with others in expressing my appreciation for it and enthusiasm for it. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, Mr. Fiden, this is the Open Space Recreation Multi-Use Trail Plan recommends a pavement the parks program. This obviously seems to be a pavement the park project. Do we have kind of an overall we, we have a lot of spots we're looking. We, we haven't done it yet. So uh -huh. we've looked at the, the front of City Hall mm -hmm. where you can actually see it. Was, it was wonderful this morning. I should have taken pictures. With a little bit of snow dusting, mm -hmm. you can see that most of the cars driving down Main Street stay at least about 15 feet away from the curb. So we've looked at that in the winter and say, wait, yeah. we have this wasted space here. We should look at that as a park. We had Nelson Nygaard look at it from a traffic standpoint. So it's complicated because it's part of circulation, sure. but it's on the list. We've looked at, in your ward, part of the Pleasant Street process is looking at, right. can we do some curb extensions that would include tiny pocket parks with them, literally one tree and one bench behind each of the curb extensions. We've looked at the intersection of Hockman and Pleasant Street. Could we do a slightly larger park there? We're, with the mayor's approval, we're looking at transferring parts of Pleasant Street from Mass Highway jurisdiction to city jurisdiction. And there's what's effectively a park just south of Hockman Road. We've looked at making that into a real park. Um, and then just last year, uh, Representative Cocott got that small parcel of land in front of the um, Registry of Deeds to be transferred to the city. We had, the transfer, I don't believe, has happened yet. 
but it's in the process. Um, is for the mayor's office, there'd be a small rotary park. So all these different things are in play. Again, they're very, very small. Um, the first one that we did years ago, and we don't get a lot of credit for this, but behind 64 Gothic Street, there's a little private park that's owned by 64 Gothic, but the public actually has the right to use that park. Mm -hmm. So we've been thinking about this for a long time in little places. Right. We find opportunities where we can, and this is a good opportunity. We're also working on a little park that out here called Oh, right. I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty expensive. Great. So focused on that. <laughs> Mr. Fiden, which one's 64 Gothic? That's where um, it's the wood frame building on Gothic Street beyond the James House. Um, on the left side, Ed Etheridge's office oh. there. Oh, my God, all the other towns. But. I didn't realize I was public. It doesn't, doesn't seem the, like The little piece in back between it and Michael's house. There's oh. a little triangular park back there. Um, my questions are, the, the right of the city... This preserves the right of the city to approve the final design. Who? Well, ultimately, the mayor is the one who's in charge. He may ask department heads to help him, but ultimately, he's the one who has to approve everything. And, and when this, he this does better signs that is up to him. This gives up to 30 years. So they would only be guaranteed for 10 years. Right. The idea is to have a big enough investment for 10 years. The mayor then could renew at that point. Yes. And would the intent to, be get, to get cash consideration? No. So that was the reason, had they wanted this as a private space for just a ramp, we would charge. We've charged, Convino paid some money, Fitzwillie's paid some money for those. But those are ones that were really privatizing space. Because they're, they're happy, because it was their suggestion, to sort of embrace the public. We think a big, bigger public need is being there. Councillor Klein. Um, I also support this. I think it's a great idea, and I hope that we see more of these in the city. I'm uh, curious if the if your office has thought about how it can kind of do double duty in terms of uh, stormwater absorption. And I know that there are cities like Portland that have these swales, you know, set into um, kind of the sides of the streets by the sidewalks that kind of absorb a lot of stormwater. So I'm wondering if there's a way in which um, when this park is designed and other similar parks are designed, we can think about it doing that kind of double duty of absorbing stormwater um, yes, so absolutely. that it serves that purpose So we've already had a discussion with them. At, at the very least, it would probably be, you know, some sort of deck so that water can go through the deck and still hit the soil below it. Whether we can do something beyond that of having a rain garden or a place to store more water, I think it takes more discussion. But that's been part of this process. Um, for Pleasant Street, for example, we're we currently going out to bids for someone to look at the design of Pleasant Street, and one of the things we're looking at is a firm who's very into green infrastructure as part of the process, so absolutely, yes. Yeah. I also just want to point out that when we redid Con Street, we built one of those uh, swales mm -hmm. um, as one of the features, so we are trying to incorporate green uh, you know, features into our current uh, road projects. So, so do I? The, um, the other bonus of this is that, that actually, as opposed to the one on Gothic, <laughs> is an act, a natural congregation point. It's um, in, it has been, in fact, actually that whole back alley has been very attractive, particularly uh, with the opening of Haymarket some time ago. So this this really lends itself to um, taking advantage of that, and I. I I, I think this, I, I hope that this actually inspires other people with, uh, to think creatively when, when addressing these really strange, uh, aberrant uh, city properties that we maintain and control that really don't serve any other purpose other than to dump snow in, um, which clearly has its value these days, but um, we aren't always under snow, perhaps. And I want to assure you that coming from San Francisco that this this will, this too shall pass. But I'm, so I, I'm excited about this, obviously, as I said, and I do think um, this place naturally lends itself to the, to uh, a, a park of this sort, a place where people can congregate and feel welcome to, as opposed to feel like they're trespassing. I did tell the Lisi this story about 10 years ago when a bear came down to the site and had to be trapped to be removed. So it's, it's a wild area. It is a wild area, that's true. Councilor Labarge? Yes, um, I have to echo with what Councilor Klein was talking about on the plants and stuff like that. But if you look at the square footage on this um, handicapped accessible ramp being 200 square feet, which would be roughly, what, 10 by 20? 
I mean, how much more could you do? So it, I know the area. I've been yeah. in that building. And I think this is just wonderful. But I'm concerned about what they actually could do for stormwater. I, I think maybe the ramp itself, like you were saying, but as far as plants, I don't know. So, so the mayor mentioned Con Con Street. It, in an urban context, literally just digging down six inches. Okay. Um, is, is often all it takes because that means that first flush of rain, which what creates that you know the yeah. biggest flooding problems, the dirtiest water, then that first flush goes in there. You know, 150 feet times half a foot is isn't a huge amount, but it's a little bit of water that stores there that's not otherwise flooding the street. So that's the kind of scale we're talking about. Nothing dramatic, yeah. but those things add up. Con Street makes a difference. I think they may have done that at North Street as well. Each one of those makes a little bit of difference. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> Is there a motion to send it forward to the full council with a positive recommendation? Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Next is financial order for Darwin Boggy Meadows Road. On the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Conservation Commission, whereas the open space, recreation, and multi use plan recommends linking conservation areas along Broadbrook and the surrounding area to enhance wildlife value and create a continuous Broadbrook Greenway. And whereas the Darwin and Support family offered 25 acres on Boggy Meadow Road for $30,950 to add to the Broadbrook Green Greenway. And whereas this acquisition will fill a gap in the Greenway. And whereas all funds will be drawn from CPA funds, Broadbrook Coalition <coughs> contributions, and community, community donations. No general fund appropriation is required. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and passive recreation purposes, as provided by Section 8C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws, the Community Preservation Act, and Article 97 of the Amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution, any fee, easement, or conservation restriction as defined in Section 31 of Chapter 184 of the General Laws, or any other interest in the above land and in any immediately adjoining land. That the City Council hereby accepts such conservation restrictions that the Conservation Commission is authorized to grant conservation restrictions on any land so acquired. Is there any discussion? Recognize the Mayor. <laughs> Again, this is sort of an exciting property. We've had discussions with the Ansport family for years. Some of you were on council maybe three years ago, remember, we came before you to acquire the property directly across the street from them. So Frank Hensporch died a few years ago, and so we've been working with various family members. We acquired that three years ago. This is for the next piece. Mostly this is just about filling in gaps and some important habitat protection. It does, and that's primarily why we're doing this, it does this one other immediate benefit, which is that Boggy Meadow Road is being damaged by beaver backing up the water to Boggy Meadow Road. Mm -hmm. This property includes the beaver activity, so if the Conservation Commission chooses to put one of those pipes through the dam, we have that opportunity. It's not the primary reason for it, but it's a nice side benefit for doing it. Councilor LaBarge. Yes, this is 25 acres plus. Has this been surveyed, or are you going by the assessor's map on the 25 so we acres? So we'll be surveying it. So we have an agreement to buy. So they own about 43 acres. So we'll be buying the land, we'll be surveying exactly up to that. I think it's 24.97, I think, is what we agreed to. I know where the area is. When you come down Hatfield Street, you go up Cook Avenue, you come up, and it's in the back? That's correct. Right. So they, their house is behind the cemetery yeah. off of Bridge Road. Yeah. They're going to keep the house in you know, 20 acres. We're buying <coughs> back land. From it. And also, I think it's very valuable because of the wild up that's in that. Is there a motion to send it forward to the full council with a positive recommendation? A motion. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Next is the financial order for the Steidler family donation. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Conservation Commission, ordered that whereas the open space recreation and multi-use plan recommends expanding the Sawmill Hills conservation area to pro protect ecologically important land and Whereas the Styler family offered to donate 3.5 acres along a perennial stream between Spring Street and Dimmick Street to add to the Sawmill Hills, and whereas the, this acquisition will protect a key stream between the Sawmill Hills and the Mill River, and whereas all soft costs will be drawn from CPA funds. 
no general fund appropriation <coughs> is required. Now therefore be it ordered that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and passive recreation purposes as provided by Section 8C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws, the Community Preservation Act, and Article 97 of the Amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution, any fee, easement, or conservation restriction as defined in Section 31 of Chapter 184 of the General Laws, or any other interest in the above land and any immediately adjoining land, that the City Council hereby accepts such conservation restrictions that the Conservation Commission is authorized to grant conservation restrictions on any land so acquired. Council of Arch. Motion to recognize what the point is. Mr. Fudd. So I, I would tell you the secret why planners don't have to work very hard. So sometimes we do detailed ecological assessments, but without doing any ecological assessment, you can look at any stream or brook or river in town and know that the vast majority of wildlife follows those streams. So we're always interested in streams that lead into conservation areas or lead out of conservation areas. This is automatically where rich habitat is. So this is a stream that comes direct, directly across Dimmick Street, is one of the largest conservation areas in the city, the Salma Hills, um, and this stream comes directly out of it. We've been looking at this property for about 10 years. The property was pitched to us, I think, 10 years ago. They were asking about $10,000. It's a nice piece of property from an ecological standpoint, but frankly, it has no development value. Mm -hmm. um, it's only real thing that scared us is not a butter could buy it and start cutting down trees and dumping pla non-recyclable plastic bags or anything else there. And so <laughs> we wanted to protect it to get control but the price didn't make sense. Um, this property is not in tax title, but about six months ago, they decided they couldn't sell it and they've stopped paying their taxes. So it's down that path, it will be in tax title. And then they came to us and said, we know we can't sell it. Does the city want it as a donation? And Conservation Commission approved it, I think, 10 years ago if we didn't have to pay for it. Um, I know where this property is. It's completely useless. It's swampy. You can't develop it, but there is that stream there that is significant with this property. And I think it also protects the Mill River and so forth like that. So I, I think this is a very good way to go. Also on the soft cost, could you explain what the soft cost is and what the price might be on that? So the only immediate soft cost is, is the title search and recording the property. So very low cost. We don't need to do a survey. We don't need to do that. So in, in full disclosure, whenever we buy land, the first thing we do is we clean up property. We look at are there any liabilities out here. Um, because is it, you, usually in a big block of land, if there's a tree that falls, we don't really care. Because this is close to homes, we definitely have to do an assessment and make sure that none of our trees are about to fall on a home. But we've sort of, when the Conservation Commission approved this, we've sort of thought about that and say, yeah, we need to assess this. There are probably a few trees that we have to take down in the future years, so we're not creating a risk. That's really the only cost, per se, for the property. So that would be what? What would be a figure about 500? Well, the, yeah, 700? in terms of the soft cost for acquiring land, about $500 is right. In terms of tree removal, that's over a number of years. There's some, you know, Thank you. Councilor Klein? I just wanted to understand the location. It's, um, this is part of Roberts Hill, right? Which is actually officially Saw, Mill, saw, saw Mills. Right. Saw Roberts Mills, Hill is Hill. a section. Sorry. OK. Um, so I'm just looking at this. I think there's um, this tributary leads to what um, people in Leeds call the muck hole. Is that true? Do you know where people skate in the winter? I believe so. I've never heard that term, but I know people skate there in the winter, so I, I have to assume it is. So there's a, there's a wet one where the water spreads out, right. and then eventually makes it in the Mill River through, going through the Country Club. Right. Okay. So I, I just wanted to get the location on it. Thank you. Is there a motion to send it forward to the full council with a positive recommendation? A motion. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next is a financial order for Vicelli family donation. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Conservation Commission, ordered that whereas the open space recreation and multi-use plan recommends expanding the Mineral Hills Conservation Area to protect ecologically important land and whereas the Vicelli family offered to donate conservation restriction on 4.9 acres in the Mineral Hills in conjunction with a wetlands permit they received off Sylvester Road to add to the Mineral Hills and whereas this acquisition will protect a key wildlife corridor between the Mineral Hills and the Sawmill Hills, and whereas all soft costs will be drawn from CPA funds, no general fund appropriation is required. 
Now therefore be it ordered that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and passive recreation purposes, as provided by Section 8C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws, the Community Preservation Act, and Article 97 of the Amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution, any fee, easement, or conservation restriction, as defined in Section 31, Chapter 184 of the General Laws, or any other interest in the above land and immediately adjoining land, that the City Council hereby accepts such conservation restrictions, that the Conservation Commission is authorized to grant conservation restrictions on any land so acquired. Mr. Fudd? So I, I apologize on the copy, the order behind you, the map is so faint as to be totally unreadable. Mm -hmm. But um, you all will probably remember that you approved us buying land on the east side of Sylvester Road, two separate parcels, both last year and this year, um, and that we now link from <coughs> Sylvester Road all the way to Ryan Road um, as, you know, I think our, maybe our second biggest conservation area is over there. Again, if you can see anything up there, there are some streams that come down from Mineral Hills that eventually become part of Parsons Brook. This lands along one of those streams, so it's an important piece. We've always wanted to link the Soma Hills to the Mineral Hills. Mm -hmm. This land is not for public access. This is going to be privately owned. They'll be paying taxes. They're just putting a restriction on it that prevents development on the rear of the property. So it's, this doesn't provide the pedestrian connection, but it does provide an ecological connection between the two. So it's part of a bigger piece. It, you know, it's, it's close to land we own in the Soma Hills, mm -hmm. close to land we own in Mineral Hills, and part of that overall scheme. Um, I, I know you're he hearing me come before you with five different parcels of land tonight. I want to be clear, it's not that we are trying to preserve all land in the city. Lots of land is appropriate for development. It's the streams, it's the, it's the connections we're trying to get. You know, this land came to the city as a donation in connection with the property owner who's applying for a wetlands permit, who's planning to do more development in the front of the property, which is a totally appropriate place for that. Yes, um, I know the family very, very well. I, I think this is the right way to go. I also know the stream on Sylvester Road, and believe me, there's a lot of wildlife out there. I think this is good. I think the quarter part of this is excellent with Summer Hills, and we can't go wrong with it and with Mineral Hills, both wards seven and six. Mr. Fine, is this a donation, or, or is, is this in, in uh, exchange for O taxes? It's, an, it's a donation. It was part of a permit. So arguably it's an exaction, it didn't go very far, the owner was happy to do it. So the Conservation Commission asked would they donate the conservation restriction to the real property and the property owner said absolutely he's happy to do it. Is there a motion? It's a, and I'm yes, sorry, this is a CR that will be overseen by the Conservation Commission. That's correct. Is there a motion to send it forward to the full council? Make a motion. motion. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next financial order for transfer of land on Riverside Drive. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Conservation Commission, ordered that whereas the open space recreation and multi-use plan recommends expanding the Mill River Greenway along the length of the Mill River, and whereas the city owns a surplus parcel of land on the Mill River in Bay State across from Riverside Drive from the former Fiker School, and whereas the parcel is not needed by Central Services, which manages the Fiker School, and whereas no general fund appropriation is required. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the mayor is authorized to transfer said parcel to the Conservation Commission for conservation and passive recreation purposes, as provided by Section 8C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws and Article 97 of the Amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution. So, I, I worked for the city long enough that I used to have a full head of hair and it wasn't gray. Um, when I was first hired at the city, one of the first assignments then that Mayor Musanti gave me was build a, a Mill River Greenway connecting disparate parcels along the river. Um, and we actually first had discussions about this parcel then more years ago than I care to admit. Um, and so this is part of it. It's a tiny piece of city-owned property. At the time, it was under school department control, and so we couldn't transfer it to Conservation Commission. School department surplused it when they surplused Fiker School. It then went to Central Services. Central Services doesn't need this parcel, and so it makes sense to come to Conservation Commission. This is a tiny parcel of land. And by itself, it's not very important from a conservation standpoint. Um, 
surrounding it, though, is 40 acres of land, tax, which covers about half a mile along the Mill River. We've been in discussions with the property owner of that property. He has said that at some point he's going to donate or sell that land to the city as part of when he, this is the, the same person who owns the Wireworks building on Federal Street. So when the Wireworks building comes forward, we're planning to get the rest of the property. So this is important in terms of being part of the bigger piece. I'm not going to argue that this parcel, which is a minuscule property, is, by, is that significant by itself. Um, we haven't done a title search, a, a, a full title search. There is a survey recorded in 1954 that shows the property being about 45 feet by about 120 feet. So again, very small piece of property, but it's actually one of the easiest entrances into the rest of the property, which is why we're interested in it. Councilor Barge. I'm still trying to figure out this property. I mean, I went over there today, driving by, and our former councillor, Alex Gieslin, are you talking about that side from Biker School across the street? That's correct. Well, there you go. Okay. I he has a, a pagoda on the, on the side yes, of the, yes, right. the right side of his property. This is a little bit further, your direction is correct, a little further west of his pagoda. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Dwight? Uh, you, always an important consideration when we have this discussion, uh, particularly of throwing land into conservation restriction, of course, is people are concerned about the tax the loss of potential tax revenue. Of course, this is municipal property that's being surplus. There is no taxes. There are no taxes attached mm -hmm. to this already. So there's no net loss uh, and no real potential gain. It's unbuildable. It's not. It's undevelopable. It's not something the city could surplus and make money off of this property. That's correct. It's within 200 feet of the river, so it would be even if we wanted to sell it, you could never get a permit for it. Right. Exactly. I just I wanted that to be clear as we go forward. Thank you. Is there a motion to send it forward with a positive recommendation to the full council? motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Financial order for conservation restriction for one acre off West Hampton Road. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David Narkowitz and the Conservation Commission ordered that Whereas the open space recreation and multi-use plan recommends preserving land near Parsons Brook in the Park Hill Road area to protect ecologically important land, and whereas the city holds a right of first refusal on eight acres of land at 440 West Hampton Road and is interested in acquiring a one acre conservation restriction on the southerly side of this land that abuts four previous conservation restrictions in the, in the other, and whereas the sellers and the buyers of this property have agreed to sell a conservation restriction on the southerly most one acre of this pro property for $500 as part of the <coughs> of the city's right of first refusal, and whereas all costs will be drawn from CPA funds, no general fund appropriation is required. Now therefore be it ordered that the Conservation Commission is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for conservation and passive recreation services as provided by Section 8C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws, the Community Preservation Act, and Article 97 of the Amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution, any easement or conservation restriction as defined in Section 31 of Chapter 184 of the General Laws or any other interest in the above land, that the City Council hereby accepts, accepts such conservation restrictions. That further, as a condition of the completion of above purchase or binding contract to purchase, the City Council authorizes the Mayor to waive the City's right of first refusal pursuant to the provisions of General Laws Chapter 61A. So, so a lot of storage. You know, again, whereas an acre or a tenth of an acre downtown is an incredible amount of land, in an outlying area, an acre is not that much. We don't generally do conservation restrictions this size. I don't think we ever have in outlying areas. But this is connects to a much larger piece. So we've acquired four separate restrictions between West Hampton Road, <coughs> Parsons Brook, and Park Hill Road. And the overall, they tell an important story. This property happened to have a sort of jagged boundary that cut into the CR. So we're really sort of trying to rationalize the boundaries. Frankly, it makes it easier to monitor. It makes it easier if you know, people develop the property behind it. Um, in terms of the council president's comment before about taxes, this property has been in Chapter 61A, so those have no effect on the property tax. We have a right of first refusal. We could buy the entire six acres of land. We don't want to do that. We really just want it. Um, we not, just a general comment and, and a mild criticism is that the, the, the maps we're getting, we could be looking at a picture of a Yeti or um, the Loch Ness Monster or a genetic code program or something. <laughs> I, I, honestly, they're not 
<laughs> you do that. They're hard. I don't know where this is or what it is, or it's it's uh, there's a triangle with an arrow pointing at it. I'm just in the in the future, it would it would be very helpful if the maps were a little more detailed, at least, so that that I mean because I mean, so far we've all been able to follow along based on the description. I mean we're all I think we're familiar with each property, but I think for the purposes, particularly for the public record, I mean if somebody looking back on this and go, what in the hell? <laughs> <laughs> So, that's 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 my only comment. Fair enough. Yeah. Thanks, Councilor LaBarge. Yes, I have to agree with Councilor <coughs> White. It's been very difficult trying to figure out what is what on the maps. But this property here, we've been dealing with this acreage from Penny Burke from way out in the back. And I know Councilor Adams, Councilor Dwight, you know exactly where this property is. It's um, Bob and Helen Dostel's house, okay, and apparently she had passed away last year, so the house is up for sale. So that property of what we're talking about, the new owners are, who are buying it are from Northampton, selling their house somewhere, I think, out in Ward 3 or 4, whatever, and moving over to the Dostos home. I don't know when that's going to be occurring, but they've been working on this since last fall about this conservation restriction and so forth in order to sell it with that piece of land. This is part of, <coughs> this is part of a waiver of the city's right of first refusal? So they have, there's six acres we could exercise a right of first refusal on where we'd be, where be, where be releasing the entire right of first refusal. You know, with preserving this one acre, we don't want any of that to be a problem. Is there a motion to send it forward to the full council with a positive motion to send it? Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Is there any new business in finance? No. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, we come out of recess. Back to the regular meeting. And uh, for those of you new to new initiates to this process, if not, we're going to do that all over again. Uh, <laughs> probably without the expansive conversation. But uh, so the finances committee made the recommendations uh, for, for those financial orders, and then we will start um, with the financial order in order this time. Um, and the first one, of course, is the financial order for the Ember Lane Parklet. Well, by the way, is that a term we coined, or is that a, is that a legitimate? It's legitimate term. It is. It is okay. It's not E T T E. I mean, I don't want to get hung up on. Okay. Parklet. Um, so the, this is. I'll accept a motion. Put that on the floor. So moved. Second it. Um, would you like me to waive reading? Waive reading. Okay. So, any further discussion on this? I think we pretty much have a pretty good sense of what this is going to be and what the what the aspirations are for. So, uh, without objection, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sarah. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. <coughs> Councilor Adams. Yes. <coughs> that has passed in first reading. There is uh, unanim unanimously, and there will be a subsequent reading at the next council uh, and pending that vote um, and based if that passes then it will pass uh, so next up we have the financial order for the Dar Darwin Boggy Meadows Road I'll accept the motion Make a motion okay. any further discussion on this uh, roll call please Councillor Klein yes Councillor Labarge yes Councillor O'Donnell yes Councillor Shera yes Councillor Spector yes Adams. Yes. Yes. Uh, that also passes unanimously. Same thing. It'll be up for second reading at the next council meeting. That will be the first meeting in March. By the way, just so to give people some sense of hope, March is the same month that spring occurs, daylight savings. There you go. Next up is the financial order for the Steidler family donation. Uh, accept a motion. Move to approve. Uh, motion's made. Who seconded? I'll, I'll second. Thanks. Um, any further discussion on this? 
Yep. Uh, roll <clears throat> roll, Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Speck. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. That passes in first reading as well, and will be up for second reading at the first meeting in March. Uh, financial order for um, a Chelly family donation. I'll accept the motion. So we second. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Uh, this is now the uh, that passes in first reading and will be available for second reading at our next meeting. Financial order for transfer of land on Riverside Drive. I'll accept. Second. Motions made and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Passes unanimously. Uh, in the first reading. We have a financial order for the conservation <coughs> restriction for 1.0 acres, and that's off West Hampton Road. Motion, please. Make a motion. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. Pam, take it away. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labar? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. And that passes in first reading. We have now a financial order to transfer funds to the uh, Treasurer's OM accounts. <coughs> this is sec uh, this is a uh, request for two readings. Thank you. Uh, but first, I'll accept a motion and put this on the floor. So moved. Motion. Uh, or second. second. Both. The motions were made seconded <laughs> several times <laughs> by the same people. This is great. We um, really want that transfer. Uh, this is for the transfer. Uh, the request for two readings we can discuss uh, when we're after this vote. But is there any further discussion? Pam. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Speck. Yes. Suspend Rule 14. Second. second. Motions are made and seconded to suspend rules to allow for a second reading tonight. Uh, any discussion on the suspension of rules? The, uh, Councilor Adams. What's the basis? Uh, Your Honor? I believe as the uh, finance director described, we, um, we've already sort of expended all the funds in the account and we've, uh, we'd like to be able to stay current with our the legal firm that we've retained to work on the tax title. So that's the, I think they'd like to have the two readings so that could happen. Any further questions, discussion on that? Uh, roll call, please. Oh, no, we're doing suspension of rules. I'm sorry. I, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll accept a motion for the second reading. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, now you can do one. <laughs> Go for Councilor it. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. That passes in second reading and is now done and law. Uh, next up is the uh, second reading for the financial order for youth commission supplies and meeting expenses. I'll accept a motion to put it on the floor. Second. Any further discussion on this? They yearn for the pizza, so <laughs> it's just an opportunity to have that. So, um, roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sarah. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor <coughs> Adams. Yes. <coughs> Councilor Dwight. Yes. That passes in second reading. Uh, this also <coughs> is in second reading the financial order for the Ryan Road roof repair. Move, Put approval. Second it. Motion's made and second. Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please, Pam. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. 
Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the bonus counselors tonight. Uh, this for an, uh, this is second reading for the financial order for the partial roof replacement for Leeds Elementary School. Approval. <clears throat> Motion's made. Second. And seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. That passes in second reading. Uh, now we move on to uh, orders and ordinances. This is uh, first up is uh, first reading for an order for the primary election to be held September 22nd, 2015. I would like the um, someone to recognize, like to recognize the city clerk. City clerk. Second. Second. This motions are made. Wendy Mazza is here. Thank you so much for uh, <coughs> sitting here, Wendy. Wendy's already threatened me. <laughs> The fact that she was being <laughs> she threatened you. All right, Wendy. It's now recorded. Yes, now we're recording. It's on public record. <laughs> so yeah, if, yeah really. if I don't get home alive, I want everyone to understand why. <laughs> well, when um, when um, looking at the calendar and the charter um, and realizing that the third Tuesday fell. Um, right in that week of a Jewish holiday, um, I said, well, we've got a problem. And so I reached out to the mayor and the city solicitor as well. Um, and there was a scenario that was brought forward that but would absolutely not work for it to be on the 8th of September because the 7th is Labor Day and it's virtually impossible to open up schools and have you know the um, absentee balloting and all of that it, it just wouldn't work that would just be horrendous so we went with the charter um, that said the fourth the fourth Tuesday um, which is the 22nd um, the mayor was nice enough to reach out to Rabbi David um, it's not ideal um, but you know it is it, it, it is acceptable um, only with the you know I, I have to make sure that everyone knows that they are if they are you know if they are celebrating this holiday and they have a problem <coughs> with abs, you know with voting they have a right to vote absentee because of a for, because of their religious beliefs so i don't want anybody to feel that they're going to be disenfranchised that they can't vote because they certainly can they'll be able to vote absentee and so we've i've chosen september 22nd um I have talked to Elections Division and, you know, they've been getting numerous calls from all the communities and, you know, they've told me a lot of the communities are not changing it. They're keeping it on the 15th, which is too bad. Um, and um, Boston, for one, is keeping it the 15th. And um, I, do, I just don't feel that that's, you know, that, that that's the correct thing to do. Um, we're trying, you know, we're trying to make this, you know, very open and, and inclusive and we want everybody to go out and vote. And so we felt the, tw I felt the 22nd was the best alternative to it. And it should be noted this primary is not for national primary or state primary it's issues, it's a municipal primary. Um, so our fortunes, it's not like we will be trumped by other communities like Boston once again on a vote so that. And it's only if there is a preliminary. Right. I mean, you know, and that's right. There might not even that. be a preliminary. You know, I won't know that till the nomination papers are in, whether we're actually going to have a preliminary, but I still have to schedule it. And so um, I'm asking for your consideration to uh, um, you know, move the preliminary from the 15th to the 22nd. Any questions for the city clerk? Council Blue mm -hmm. I want to thank you, Wendy, for coming in and explaining this. No you did an excellent job. No problem. Um, I'm just wondering if there, um, if you have any vision for how this is going to kind of be um, put out to the public, because I well, just imagine there are folks that are going to be traveling that day. We will. Well, I'm going to work with. Uh, I will work with the, the the Gazette and the Union to make sure that we get enough notice out to um, the general public as far as you know the change of the preliminary and also. Um, 
being able to vote absentee. I mean, we usually have the same group of people during a municipal that will come in because we have the same people leaving for Florida and so forth. So, you know, in that case, most of them know that, but for this reason, we will definitely get some communication out um, to the general public to let them know because it is a change and we want to make sure that they don't feel that they're gonna be disenfranchised because some people do celebrate Yom Kippur that, you know, before sundown. And um, so we wanna make sure that, you know, they, they know that they can come in and they can still vote or request an absentee ballot to be mailed to them. I don't think it's so much celebrating per se, it's exactly. more just, you know, going getting ready to where for, they're yeah, going or it. getting ready, yeah. Exactly. Any further questions or discussion? Uh, okay, roll well, up oh, please. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Thank you. That passes first reading, and I suspect, given the fact that we're talking about September 22nd, that there's no need for a second reading tonight, I would imagine. Nor is there a need for you to come back next time. Okay. You're not required, of course, to come back at the next meeting to. Re-explain this to us. I appreciate you honoring our short-term memory issues, and I thank you. But <laughs> have fun outside. Uh, next up is an ordinance pertaining to uh, car sharing and central business. And uh, we, uh, by process of elimination, the only person who can speak to that issue is the mayor. At this point, we have. It's a referral. Well, it's, a referral. it's a referral. Okay, you didn't want to. Okay. I, Councilor, I would, uh, Councilor O'Donnell. I would move to refer it to ordinance and planning. Second it. Okay. Transportation uh, parking has already seen it. it. This comes from transportation parking, or? It's, it, I introduced it there, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Can I have a brief explanation as to what it is without getting too into it so I can know if I want to refer it anywhere else? I don't, I don't know. It, Fair enough. Oh, Councilor yeah, O'Donnell, you want to? Um, it has to do with off-street parking requirements in central business. Uh, currently, there, there are none. Um, this ordinance proposes to create uh, a, a standard for car sharing or bike sharing or electric vehicle charging when new large projects are built downtown with the purpose of having these spaces available should car sharing and those other things become in demand in the future we have the spaces ready. Any discussion on the referral beyond that? All those in favor of the referral, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Just want to see what time it is. Uh, Mr. Spector, did you have a bet? No, no we, we didn't. Uh, yeah, because you would have been slaughtered. <laughs> it's 817. Um, well, there is no more information requests. Uh, there's no updates from me. Um, and there is no new business, so I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. aye. Thank you all very much. Have a pleasant evening. Good luck.